you should know before marrying this person that I can trust them with my heart. Mm -hmm. I don't have to protect myself from this person. Mm -hmm. I can drop those walls. You know why? Because I've already begun that process before we even said I do. I felt safe enough to do that yeah. before we even said I do. Now, will there be moments where I may have to work through some of that? Sure, but you've already proven or given me enough reason to say, everybody and welcome to another episode of marriage matters if you're watching for the very first time i'm your host one of your hosts glenn coleman and i'm joined as always by my stunning wife my other host the co-host other co-host the other person on this podcast am i supposed to say my name yeah. Oh, okay. I'm Tanya waiting. Coleman. Hey, guys. There she go. Hey, yep, yep. So, uh, like I said, this is Marriage Matters. This is a podcast where we talk about all things relationships. Um, and we have uh, been having uh, just a great time mm -hmm. discussing uh, the relationship, I guess, between, uh, should I say relationship between or how the effects mm -hmm. of dependency or codependency uh, independency, independency and interdependency, right. the effects of that these things have on marriage or on mm -hmm. relationships. Mm -hmm. And so I think we've been kind of looking or using kind of like a scale or a spectrum, if mm -hmm. you will, where you have codependency uh, or dependency on one side. Mm -hmm. On the other side, you have uh, independent Inter independency. Mm -hmm. And in the middle, you have interdependency. interdependency. And so what we've been discovering um, is that anytime you go to the extreme ends of any of these spectrums, mm -hmm. um, you, um, you, you, there's detrimental effects sure. that happen to your relationships. Mm -hmm. And so last week we talked about dependency and codependency. Mm -hmm. um, thanks for all the feedbacks, all, yeah, feedback, of feedback, all the comments. Um, yeah. You have anything you want to say about uh, that, that just to kind of bring home a point of codependency or well i think realizing that um if you are functioning from a place of cope you find yourself functioning from a place of codependency um uh, it is definitely um an area that you want to pursue doing some some work to heal um because typically uh, when we are operating from that place it's because there has there's a pain source somewhere, yeah. um, and there's something that has been unaddressed within that individual that they need to address. Um, and it's a really great idea to do it as soon as possible so that you can heal and then begin to bring healing um, to the marriage. Yeah, and so I'll just say, you know, that no one or no thing should be your everything. Absolutely. And that's unfair to your partner. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, that, that place should be reserved for the creator. Yeah. Um, he is the, the, he is the one that fills us, fills all in all, mm -hmm. if you, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, and so we should never put the pressure on someone else to make us happy and to fulfill us. Right. Um, cause, it, cause people are going to people. Yeah. And people, people are, are gonna do what people, people do. Yeah, people are gonna people, and they're gonna let right. you down. Right. And if 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 they're gonna make mistakes, mm -hmm. you're gonna make mistakes. So mm -hmm. they're gonna make mistakes. So if if all of your if, if you put your if if your total being and existence is mm -hmm. tied up into how this other person responds to you or treats you, mm -hmm. not to saying that not to say that they shouldn't treat you well, but I'm right. saying. If if you give them all the all those chips, if you give them all the marbles, mm -hmm. uh, then um, you're not gonna have a uh, it, that's gonna crumble. That yeah. relations those relationship dynamics are not gonna work long term. Mm -hmm. And like we said last week, I mean there may be a, a phase of your life where you may be, you know maybe you 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 hurt, uh, maybe you know you just had a kid, mm -hmm. uh, maybe you just had an injury, um, whatever that is. 
Uh, you you may have to operate in that for a while to where you are dependent on someone right. else to right. to to uh, to help you a little bit more than normal. Mm -hmm. But the the um, the, the, the problem comes in is when you stay in that state for an extended period of time. Right. Uh, and as I kind of used the example last week, uh, you know, like our kids, at, at some point we expect them, you know, to learn how to use the bathroom mm -hmm. or the restroom mm -hmm. uh, for, our, uh, for if you if you grew up saying that, you know, I, I would like I said, unless something tragic happened or something really something went wrong, I'm not going to expect my 16 year old or she. I'm not going to expect my 16-year-old to expect me to change her, her diapers. Absolutely. Right? Because Absolutely. that's not, you know, they should be dependent on me for that at some point. And even as they get older, the more older they get, the more mature they get, the, the less dependent they should be on me. Yeah. So this is kind of a recap. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, I would encourage you, if you didn't listen to last week's episode, please go back and listen to uh, last week's episode. Next week, we're going to be talking about interdependency, yeah. which is yeah. what we call, is where you want to be with all right. of your relationships. Right. Interdependent. Yeah. Not independent, not dependent, but interdependent. Mm -hmm. um, and so this week, we're going to talk about independence. Yeah. Um, we just, our country celebrated its Independence Day. Right. Um, last Sunday. Yeah. Um, so, um, so the word independence doesn't always have a negative connotation, but again, it's it's all in um, how you're looking at it and, mm -hmm. and how you approach it. Even if you go to the extreme of always being independent in a relationship, that's not a great place to live. And also, right. stay tuned because we have a very some very special guests. Yes. They're gonna they're gonna be with us on the the last, the last Sunday, Sunday of this month, month yeah. or the last week of this month for that week's podcast. We got some special guests that are gonna be on, so you don't mm -hmm. want to miss that. So, said that to all all that to say. This week, we're talking about independence. And I will say that for me, Glenn Coleman, I think I tend to swing to this side mm -hmm. of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I'm not, I wouldn't say I was, when I, whenever I get stressed, whenever um, I'm angry, whenever I'm function, whenever I'm functioning dysfunctionally, I tend to run to that other, to the independent, you know, I don't need nobody, just be by myself, all that kind of stuff. So we can kind of unpack some of that today as well. So um, what, let's, let's, let's get into it. So what are your thoughts? Well, um, for me, when I think of a couple or an individual within um, a relationship or marriage who's operating from a place of um, independence, I think that that comes up because they have had to be self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. um, it comes up because they have maybe experienced some, some sense of lack of support or um, that maybe they've experienced some form of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, abandonment. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's kind of like it makes me think of the child who always says and we have one of those and i think all children may go through, most many children go through this phase when they hit that three four years old it's like i can do it myself i got it i got it <laughs> you know if they're yeah. really young and they're just starting to you know to talk well you know me self me mm -hmm. you know i got it so it's kind of like an adult operating from that that place that mm -hmm hands off I don't need you to help me I don't want you to help me because I can do it myself and I need for you to know that I can do this by myself yeah you know and I think that that um it puts some distance and some space um mm -hmm. between the couple and and creates a lack of uh vulnerability a lack of intimacy and a lot of the things that we often talk about on the show yeah. Okay. Well, one of the things that I, I kind of want to jump into when it comes to independence is, you know, I think we live in a culture that values independence mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and prizes independence. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, one of the, uh, uh, I'll, just jokingly, I'll say sometimes, you know, do you, boo-boo. You know, that's, that's kind of one of those cultural 
sayings, you know, mm -hmm. I'm going to do me, you do you. Right. Um, as a matter of fact, one of our favorites, uh, Tab, yeah. Tabitha Brown, she has a song, she sings, uh, I'm going to do me, mm -hmm. you do you, mm -hmm. something like that, and that's my business, you know? <laughs> And, and I understand what she's saying, and I know Tab, I don't know Tab yet. Right. I don't know her like that, but I know her enough to know that she she's not talking from a relationship. As a matter of fact, right. when you when she talks about her and her husband, they're definitely a team, mm -hmm. and they definitely work as a unit. Mm -hmm. um, but I think a lot of times we try to bring that you do you, I'm going to do me culture into, into, our into our marriage. Yeah, into our marriage. Um, and, and it doesn't work because mm -hmm. the whole... Uh, marriage is built on partnership. It's yeah. built on interdependency. It's built on relationship. Uh, relationship. Operating in sync with another person. Exactly. And mm -hmm. you know, uh, God said, you know, the two shall become one. And mm -hmm. like, I know we talk about the two a lot um, because I think sometimes we put an over emphasis on the the two becoming one and we forget mm -hmm. about the two mm -hmm. but there has to be a progression towards the two and I'll say this in marriage becoming one does not mean losing two right right it's it's figuring out how to make the two work together mm -hmm. Um, and and we'll we'll I, I want to say this for next week remind me to bring our our play-doh mm-hmm because we, we do this um, in, uh, well, we, well, one of the classes we teach, we do this exercise with the couples to where we give them Play-Doh mm -hmm. and we, you know, have them put the di different colors together. Mm -hmm. And it's a beautiful thing because you still, in a lot of places, can see mm -hmm. the, the one color and you can see the other color. Right. But then they come together to make you this new plan. color. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, just, it's a really great illustration mm -hmm. um, that... Because, you know, when you're in a relationship doesn't mean you lose who you are. Right. It's just that you take who you are and merge it and pair it with the person that you're in a relationship with. Um, and so, you know, get we, we have to, we can't allow the, the do you culture mm -hmm. to come into our marriage relationship because do you is the opposite it's the total right. opposite right. of of being married mm -hmm. you know do you that's that's a that's a single mentality you know um and it, it just doesn't it just doesn't um doesn't work, work. work you know in, you in said marriage. that you know it's the culture is do you do you i'm going to do me mm -hmm. well there as we often hear, there is no I in team. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just like a say, like literally you spell the word, there is no There's I no in I. team. You know, I think I've said this before in the podcast, but mm -hmm. when I was in high school uh, and uh, uh, a coach would say that or something, mm -hmm. there's no I in team. And then we whispered to each other, but there's an M and an E. See, that's counterproductive. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of productive for what that's coach that's is me. trying to do that's and for me. what we are trying to do. Uh, I know. Uh, but, you know, there is no I in team. Yeah. And if you really think about it, yeah, there is an M and an E, but it's not M E, it's E A. -E you have to totally, yeah. look at this, you have to, you have to totally break the you word apart. You have to apart break the word And rearrange apart. it. Right. And throw away, and throw away a stuff part of the word. to get me exactly. out, of, out of team. Exactly. Ooh, that's good. Right it there. is good. And I think that we have to realize that the you coming, an individual coming into a marriage and still functioning from, uh, like you said, from a place of singleness is going to be detrimental to what we the couple are trying to produce yeah and so if you come into marriage um with all of these protectors on and that you know no i'm gonna keep my little my little stash because people do it with money mm -hmm. you know they do it with emotions mm -hmm. you know they do it with you know past situations that they've been in and they don't they're not open and honest yeah. and and there's no clear picture of who you are you know, mm -hmm. um, and so if you are feeling that you have to have all these protections in order when you get married, then my question would be, why are we getting married? Yeah, yeah. And you said a key word. You said the protection. Mm -hmm. Independency, automatic. I want to say automatically, but I'll say automatically. Mm -hmm. Independency automatically creates walls. Yes, it does. Um, and 
outside of marriage, those are great. Mm-hmm. Well, I didn't even say they're great, but sometimes they're needed. Right. I'll say that. Mm-hmm. They're needed. Um, but you don't want to, that, that you, you can't, it, it stops you from engaging in two of the things that are, that are needed in marriage, and that's vulnerability and intimacy. Yes. You cannot be vulnerable with walls, because like Tanya said, when you when you do that, when you set up those walls, and you're keeping, it's like you, you're keeping parts of yourself back from, from your spouse. From the person that you you're know, And a lot of times, you know, we, we, and that's why we encourage couples, and again, we're, we're not here to tell you what to do or none of that, but mm-hmm. we always encourage couples to have a joint banking account. Because when you, anything you separate, you're putting up a wall. You know, and even though you may be saying, oh, well, you know, my wife got access to my accounts. Okay, yes, they do, but um, why can't you just put it all together? Bring it all together. And and having, because what it's doing is building in, you're Mm -hmm. building in separation Mm -hmm. to your marriage. Um, Bills, you know, I have, these are my bills, these are your Mm -hmm. bills. Debt. These are your debts. These are my debts. I don't, I don't want you messing up my credit score. Right. Or, mm-hmm. You know, um, keeping secrets, mm-hmm. uh, hiding your past. There are things in your past that you're not bringing. Right. You know, and I know a lot of times, um, you know, we say, well, we don't want to dwell in the past. And I understand that. But what you have to understand is that who you are today is a result of that past. Absolutely. And so if there are some things that are showing up in your in your future that are from your past Mm -hmm. and your spouse doesn't know about that then they could be thinking well this is it's it's not it's not even your spouse sometimes most of the time it's the past right so that's why it's so important that we we are open and we talk about those things and we don't we don't have that like you said that single mindset or that independent mindset Mm -hmm. um so i have a note here it is impossible to create true connection and intimacy when you keep a piece of yourself yeah absolutely because you're not being vulnerable. The key to true intimacy is vulnerability. Yeah. Why do people withhold vulnerability? Because of fear. Yeah. I am afraid that you're going to hurt me, disappoint me, let me down, take from me, mm-hmm. not give all of yourself to me. So because I'm afraid that you're not going to give all of yourself to me, I need to withhold a part of myself from you. Mm-hmm. You know, so there's this we're functioning from this fear factor, you know, which we know is never beneficial um, in relation to building something with your with your life partner, with your with your spouse. Right. And so if we are going to if we are really going to be intimate and open and build together and truly trust like you can't I can't trust you a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If if I trust you, like I really have to trust you wholeheartedly, mm-hmm. right? And I can't just say, I trust Glenn, but mm, in this area, I don't know. I don't trust you. Mm-hmm. And so if I don't trust you, there's no vulnerability. Yeah. You know, and then if there's no vulnerability, there's no true intimacy. Yeah. Because I'm withholding a part of myself, and so you don't get the full, you don't get to see into me mm. completely and fully. You know what I mean? Say this, sister. <laughs> mm. But yeah, and, and I, we were talking earlier and we were saying that most of the time, it, that independence, that a lot of times it, it's a facade. Mm-hmm. And it, it's not, especially because uh, because there is, and we're going to talk about it next week, there is a healthy, you have to have a healthy sense and I don't even say independence. I'll call it a healthy sense of who you are. Of self. A healthy uh, sense of self. Mm-hmm. Um, but a lot of times that independent, I'm my own man, I'm my own woman, I don't mm-hmm. need nobody, I don't need help. That's a defense mechanism. Mm-hmm. And it was built because of hurt. Mm-hmm. And it served you well mm-hmm. in, the, in, in the past. It served you well. It kept you emotionally I don't even say emotionally sound, but it kept you emotionally, uh, emotionally safe. Mm-hmm. Is, maybe I can use that term. Mm-hmm. But it, it 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 kept you from just totally breaking down. Mm-hmm. Because if you would have truly let your environment in, or or exposed yourself, mm-hmm. or, or revealed yourself in the environment that you were in, it mm-hmm. might have taken you out mm-hmm. emotionally, physically, mentally, um, what have you. And so you built this facade um, to. 
um, to protect yourself. Right. But but what we have to do is learn to heal from those things. That's why we do the work that we do mm -hmm. is to help people heal from those because again, that can't you can't have a a you may have a relationship, but it's not going to be as good as it can be and right. should be right. as long as um, those walls are up. Um, so you said this earlier. You said independency creates unhealthy space and distance in relationships. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's that, you know, like I said a moment ago, because, you know, I always talk about giving your spouse space and grace. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Space to process emotions, to to figure out what they're feeling, what they're thinking, giving them opportunity to figure that that out on their own so that they can clearly communicate that with you, right? Mm -hmm. Giving them grace to realize that, hey, we all have a bad, have bad days, we have bad moments. Um, and, you know, they may be in the, having a bad day or a bad moment and they may speak to you in a way that is unkind, you know, things like that. So giving them space to process, giving them grace when they're not, you know, 100% where they need to be right but and that's healthy space mm -hmm. the unhealthy space is when i communicate to you without my words i said what did i say earlier that you know we communicate <laughs> um without words i i don't know you i said, said something you said you you uh uh non-verbally you non-verbally communicate without words. I, I fixed it up where I said it to three different people so yeah. they can understand. It. Yeah, <laughs> it was like a non, you non you 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 don't speak non-verbally. Uh, you communicate with unspoken words, words non-verbally. Non there you like that's that. what it was. So it's like <laughs> communicate with that's, unspoken that's, that's words non-verbally. <laughs> that's like that's really, real silence, yeah. but you're speaking yeah. loudly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, I got this. I can do that myself. No, I can, you know, I can handle it. I don't need you to do that. I can do this myself. And mm -hmm. so every time that spouse is trying to be open, they're trying to reach out to you. They're trying to let you know that I'm here to serve you. I'm here to help you. You give them this. Yeah. And so then there's, there's this feeling of, and I've heard men say this that she acts like she doesn't need me she can be the man and the woman in this mm. relationship she can be the husband and the wife in this relationship so where does that leave me yeah yeah you know um you you said this earlier too independency makes your partner feel as if they don't that you don't desire them Yes. Um, and so you said need, but also there's a that, that sense of desire. Uh, desire and I think that's the word maybe that people mean when they, when say, they need. say need. Yeah. It's that she doesn't want me. Yeah. She doesn't want my help. She doesn't want yeah. my, my love and my support and my care. So why am I here? Yeah. And, you know, and unf I, I see this and and I'm not I hate saying stuff like this because. I don't like making generalizations, but mm -hmm. I see this a lot in women mm -hmm. um, because I think, you know, with women and you're a woman, mm -hmm. so you can help me with mm -hmm. this. But I think for so many years, look, I'm reassuring you. Yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> but I think for so many years, women have been and, and, I, and well, they've been like a second, I think they were, but second class citizen or whatever. Sure, absolutely. And they didn't, they couldn't express themselves, they mm -hmm. couldn't. Been treated you know, as a be, second class treated. citizen. Yeah, And absolutely. especially, you know, and I, you know, well, I'm just gonna say, because we got to deal with this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Especially black women. So mm -hmm. now you are, not, you, you're black. Mm -hmm. So that's a level of, you were treated less than, mm -hmm. and you didn't have the same rights mm -hmm. as your white counterparts. Mm -hmm. But then as a woman, mm -hmm. being less than, treated less than a man, and not having the same rights as a man. So mm -hmm. it's like, uh, I think they call that um, intersectionality, mm -hmm. maybe. Mm -hmm. So it's like where these two things convene. And so I think that to, to a lot of times, when we are dealing with something, like a great example for me, I, I, I struggle with expressing my thoughts and feelings. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times what happens is because I was on, I was quiet and I didn't speak my mind for so long, mm -hmm. it, when, I, when I release it, it comes out to the other extreme. Right. 
Right. And I think it's the same way with that independence. It's like I think sometimes women have been held back for so long, so now they have to prove how independent. And I don't need a man, and I don't want a man, mm -hmm. and I don't, you know, I don't want no man telling me what to do, mm -hmm. and all of those I things. Can, I can I can pay my own bills. I can pay my own bills. Uh, Matter I, of fact, they have they got songs about it. Pay my own bills, pay my telephone mm -hmm. bill. You know, I don't think. You remember there was Destiny's Child yeah, Destiny's song, Child, right? Yeah. You yeah. know, and then they also made a song, De Destiny's Child. Please <laughs> <laughs> don't people though. But they made a song about the uh, all the women, yeah, independent, independent. You yeah. know. Mm -hmm. So again, it's this mentality of I I'm my own person. And, 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 and here's and, what here's what I I know and I and what I feel my, from my perspective. I get all of it, right? Because when you have been in that, been treated or seen as a second class citizen, you know, from other people, um, then what is the, the, the human nature and the spirit is that I know and I'm going to show you that how you're treating me is not accurate. That's not who I am. Mm -hmm. And I am more than, and I can be, and I will be more than what you have, okay. than what you've treated me, uh, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so, <laughs> so you, all you, you take missing, me all off. All you was missing was that. And and that's, that's a thing, right? Yeah. You know, so <laughs> when that happens, it's not that, you know, She's coming, like we say in, in culture, you know, coming for you. It means that my passion is roaring yeah. at this point. Yeah. And that, and you know, I love um, Lisa Bevere. She's one of my favorite teachers, you know. And she has a book, and it's it has some years on it now, but it's called Lioness Arising. Mm -hmm. And that lioness begins to arise on the inside, you know, because I have to protect, you know, my my pride i have to protect and not like pride as in and i'm not saying from pride as in the animal kingdom but pride in myself mm -hmm. and my pride my mm -hmm. home and all of the things that i work for my family all of those things and so i think that's the place that that's coming from Absolutely. you know and because there has been so much pain right um black women have been overly sexualized mm -hmm. black women have been treated as less than for you know positions that they are highly qualified for and have worked their butts off to earn and not given those positions because of i am a woman and i am black mm -hmm. you know and i think our counterparts have had some of those experiences not the full range of them right you know but that's I that's where that comes from. I get it and I understand it. Mm -hmm. But here's what I would like for women to also get and understand that when you choose well, when you are in relationship with a person that you didn't just marry because I wanted to be married, because I wanted the ring, right? Mm -hmm. I wanted the wedding day. You didn't marry for those reasons. And you didn't marry on a whim. You didn't marry because, you know, he looked good, the sex was good, and all this other kind of stuff. But you really married because this is the person that you feel God has led you to and that you all can build something. And you've truly investigated and invested the, the time to learn this individual and you're coming together you should know before marrying this person that I can trust them with my heart. Mm -hmm. I don't have to protect myself from this person. Mm -hmm. I can drop those walls. You know why? Because I've already begun that process before we even said I do. I felt safe enough to do that yeah. before we even said I do. Now, will there be moments where I may have to work through some of that? Sure. But you've already proven or given me enough reason to say, yeah, and I, I think that that with everything and you I just... And I don't know where all that came from, but... Okay. No, I, I saw you. I'm like, I'm going to let her go. I'm going to step back. <laughs> I'm going to step back because I don't want to get in the way. But no, all that you just said, that's the stuff that... That's where the healing needs to take mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. And and for, you know, women and, you know, for men as well. But mm -hmm. I'm, like I said, I, I just... My, my heart 
it, it hurts and I see it so often mm-hmm. that that's why I wanted to bring it up and I remember like this one woman I, I'm I, she used to uh, be in the barbershop where I used to get my hair cut back when I had hair um, and she was just so just angry and mm-hmm. and uh, I was kind of like Tab oh the hurt <laughs> Oh, that hurts. You know, but I could just sit and, and and I remember asking. I was like, "Man, who hurt you?" Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. it was just like, and it was just this so hard evident. shell. And and like Tanya was saying, you you don't you don't you don't you should find somebody that can help you. That if you have to be that with your spouse, then, uh, well, I'll just say, like I said, that's where the healing has to take place. Yeah. And yeah. you have to go back and and revisit those those moments that had to that created that hard exterior shell mm-hmm. for you and and first of all recognize it and, and and be aware of it and then go back and do the healing work you know we were watching um best man holiday mm-hmm. uh last one That's saturday, last week, I think. saturday last morning week, i don't know we were watching some movies in bed and uh, there's this this uh scene where nia long's character mm-hmm. um you know she's talking to this man that she's dating mm-hmm. And he's getting ready to leave, and and he said, you know, sometimes you make me feel like you don't even need me, mm-hmm. or you act like you don't even need me. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I don't. Right. And then, but in that moment, I know it's just a fictional movie, but all all fiction is based in reality. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but you could you could see the change on her face because she realized what she had just mm-hmm. said. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and you in can actuality, see the hurt on his face. yeah. And but here's the deal: I think the reason why it hurt her so much mm-hmm. because that wasn't her truth. Yeah, she really wanted him. She really wanted somebody right. to take care of her. She really wanted somebody to build with. Mm-hmm. She just didn't know how because for so long, she's like, if if I'm gonna if I'm gonna get it, if I'm gonna be the CEO, if I'm gonna mm-hmm. be the top at the top of my game, the top of my industry, I, I have to put on this exterior hard shell. In order to get through all of this, mm-hmm. and and I don't know, you may have you may have had to do that mm-hmm. in your industry. You may have had to do that growing up in your family. Mm-hmm. But I want you to know that you were not designed to live that way. Right. So, like we said, sometimes we have to go into, you know, to we swing to some of these other sides of the of the spectrum. Mm-hmm. But you were never designed to live at though. You were right. you were designed to live in interdependency. You were designed mm-hmm. for connection. And you know, like we were saying earlier, proof of that is. You know, like when when, a, when a, there's a newborn baby born, mm-hmm. and you leave that baby alone by himself or herself long enough, mm-hmm. they're gonna start crying mm-hmm. because why? They are they and if they don't, if your baby doesn't cry when he's when they're left alone for extended period of time, what's gonna happen? You're they, gonna you're gonna bring them to a doctor and right, say something wrong, is wrong with crying. my baby. Yep, because. We are, nobody taught that baby that. Nobody right. taught that baby how to long right. for touch. We are built for We are built. That's connection. something that is built mm-hmm. into you. And what happens is a lot of times we've learned to suppress it. Um, I wanted to say this, you know, from a woman's perspective to encourage women, you know, not as a black woman, just as a woman, period. That when you are whole Mm -hmm. or working toward wholeness um and you're in a marriage you know with someone you're in a relationship with someone they will see the the progress Mm -hmm. right um we both have areas that we need to work on we always do y'all no one comes into this thing perfect Mm -hmm. right um But I want to encourage women that when you choose well, a lot of the the past experience that you've had, the things that you've had to be concerned about and protect yourself from, when you are sure that you've chosen well. And I know it's hard to be sure, but that's where the vulnerability comes in that, in that taking that chance, then just try to drop those walls. Mm-hmm. Try to produ- to drop those protective habits, right? Because what you don't want 
is to push the very person that you do desire to be closest to you to push them away. Yeah. And and they feel it. Yeah. Um, we were talking with a couple and, and they were just saying, one of them was saying, I, I just, I can't put my finger on it, but I just know when I try to connect with them, mm-hmm. it's just something that's there. That's mm-hmm. all that, they couldn't explain it. Mm-hmm. They'll be like, but I, I just can't, something's there. Mm-hmm. And and that's what that is. On a, on a spiritual, emotional level, your partner knows mm-hmm. when when there's a wall there. Mm-hmm. And it, it's, uh, like we said earlier, it could lead to them feeling like you really don't want them, that you mm-hmm. really don't desire them, mm-hmm. that you, you, you're, you're, you're not. Um, and, and so like for you, you're, you're not, you don't see that because you are, you are safe in your wall. Right, right, right. right. But for them, it's like, I can't, I can't get in there. You right. Know? And then, so as a result, they begin to pull back Yeah. because I'm not sure that she actually desires to be in this with me a hundred percent. So why would I give all of me to her if she's reserving a part of herself? Yeah. You know, so I just encourage you ladies, one, um, don't choose, and this is for people who are not married, don't choose to stay in or enter into a relationship where you can't fully trust. Some of that may be you, some of that may be some other things that you know are on him but if you're not sure don't say i do Hmm. work through that and figure out if this is the person that you truly should be marrying or not before you get married yeah Save yourself a lot of time and effort. Save yourself, and don't a lot ever feel like it's too late. You know, well, I'm engaged, and mm-hmm. we got the, mm-hmm. we got the. He bought the ring, I bought the dress. Maybe and get a refund. Look, all of those <laughs> things, right? Because when you get on this side of it, you know, we we made a decision that we will take divorce. We have taken divorce off of the table for us, which is which means that we have committed to working through those moments where. Something from my history, my past may pop up for me and I may begin to build a wall. Glenn's going to address it and say, hey, what's going on with you? And we have created a space where I can begin to talk through that with him. If I can't talk through that with him, then there are other people in my life that I can begin to talk through that with. But guess where I'm coming back to? I'm coming back Mm -hmm. to him. Because mm-hmm. he's the only one that I'm truly in covenant with and that God has has given me to to create a life and a family with. But there have been past experiences before Glenn and there were I didn't feel that safety, mm-hmm. you know, that wasn't there, you know, and so. For those individuals, I, there was a reserve and I did have to pull back and Glenn had to, to, we had to go through a process to really be able to get to the place where now I can completely open up and be completely open and vulnerable. And it, I mean, on both sides, you mm-hmm. know, and there, like I said, there are moments where some of that stuff will come up, but we have to learn to work through it. Mm-hmm. So, so what I'm saying is it's easier for those of you who are not married yet if you're still working through the stuff, work through the stuff before you get married. Cause you'll still have some things to work on once you get married. But for those deep things and you keep going back and forth, if I don't know, I'm not sure. And you know, you, it, the big issue stuff, you guys know what I'm talking about. Then you need to deal with that first before you get married to this person. <laughs>